Welcome also to those who are tuning in from Trinidad and Tobago. Amen. We just um, also invite you to invite others to join in with us this evening and share this live broadcast. We're just going to enter to prayer um, right now and then go right into worship. Father, we just thank you for this time, God. We thank you for this time of fellowship, God. We thank you for this time, God, of um, your presence being in the midst of us, God. Father, we just acknowledge you this evening, God. We acknowledge your presence, God. We acknowledge your peace. We acknowledge your joy, God. We acknowledge you, God. Father, we just give you the honor, glory, and praise, God. Father, I just pray, God, as we enter into worship this evening, God, that your presence, God, will be felt, God. Your presence, God, will be sensed, God. Father, and that your presence will show up, God, in a special way this evening in each life, Father. Father, I pray, God, that all men will be drawn unto you, God. And Father, we just thank you for what you're doing right now in each life, God. Upon hearing your word this evening, upon entering into worship, God, we just thank you for what you're doing even now, God. And Father, we just give you the honor, glory, and praise this evening, God. And Father, we, uh, we just pray, God, that uh, Father, that you will just continue to flow, God. 
that your presence will continue to flow throughout this evening, Father. And we just thank you, Father. We give you the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you the thanks and praise. We give you the honor and the glory, God. We lift our voices unto you, God. We lift our worship unto you, Father. We lift our hands unto you, God. Father, we pray that you will have your way, God. Have your way, Father. Have your way in this place. Have your way in each life, Father. You are the King of glory, Father. You are the King of glory, God. Father, you are the King of glory, Father. We thank you for who you are, God, that you are mighty, God. You are all-knowing, God. We thank you, Father. We give you the honor, glory, and praise this evening, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are welcome in this place, Father. You are welcome in this place, God. You are welcome in this place, God. You are welcome in this place, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you.
hallelujah, and I'll sing hallelujah till you come again. Come dance, and I'll dance in your presence till you come again. And I'll sing hallelujah till you come again. And I'll dance in your presence till you come again. King of glory, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you, King of glory. Just wanna be with you, King of Glory, King of Glory. Fill this place. I just wanna be with you. I just wanna be with you, King of Glory, King of Glory. just want to be with you I just I just want to be with you 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 I just want to be with you, just want to be with you, just want to be with you, just want to be with you. Father, we just thank you, God. Father, we just want to be with you this evening, God. We just want to be in your presence, God. We just want to be in your love, God. We just want to be in your peace, God. Father, we want to be with you this evening, God. Father, there is none like you, God. In your presence, there is freedom. In your presence, there is joy, God. We want to experience your joy. We want to experience all of you this evening, God. Father, I just thank you, God. For you are an awesome God. You are a loving God. You are a caring God. We just thank you this evening God. We thank you God for all that you have done. We thank you for your son. Jesus Father. That you have expressed your love to mankind. To us God. That you have sent your only begotten son God. To die for our sins Father. That upon repentance, upon calling the name of Jesus, that we are saved, God. Father, we just thank you for your saving grace. We thank you for your son. We thank you, God, for he laid his life down, that we may be reconciled. We, we have a doorway, God, to be reconciled back unto you, Father. We thank you, God, for your expression of love, God. We thank you, God. Father, we just pray, God, as we enter into your word, as we listen to what you have to say this evening, God. Father, I just pray, God, that we enter in with, the, with our hearts being open, with our minds being open, God, ready to receive what you have to say, God. Father, we just thank you, God. And Father, we are expecting, God, as you speak, God, that things in our own lives will begin to change, Father. That scales over our eyes will begin to fall off, God. That our ears will begin to unplug, God. Father, we just thank you, God. Transform us today, Father. Conform us into, 
um, what you have intended us to be, God. Father, we thank you, God, that you are perfect in all of your ways and that you're moving even now, Father. We commit this time to you, Father. Have your way. Be glorified. Be glorified in this place. Be glorified through your word, God. Father, I pray, God, that you will be exalted, that they will see you, that they will not only hear you, but that they will see you, Father. And Father, we submit our lives to you. We submit this time unto you. And Father, we pray that you have your way in this place. You have your way in each life. You speak what needs to be spoken. And we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for your life. We thank you for strength. We thank you, Father, for your presence. And we give you the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve a great God, and he's awesome. And he's perfect in all of his ways. Amen. Um, I'm now going to move on. And we are going. I'm going to introduce you to our senior lead pastor of Life Current International Ministry, um, Obadiah Clark. And we just pray that you will be continue to be blessed this evening. And don't forget, share the live broadcast because everyone needs to know Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Janola, Tysina, and Karis, and uh, for leading us in worship. Thank you to our wonderful producer, also Lael. Um, I'm just grateful for my family and and how we can work together and uh, do what God has called us to do. Uh, and planning Live Current International Ministries. I just want to welcome all of you who are watching. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're, we're just excited that you're watching and viewing with us. I, I want to ask you a favor. If all of you right now can share uh, this video, uh, or host a watch par party, invite people to watch this, um, because I really believe God has a word for, for um, us today. He has a word for many people out there today. And I, I want to see uh, this word get into every heart that it needs to get into. So I'm asking if you can please share this video. Um, and even as we go through and, and as uh, this video, as I speak, as we preach and as God moves, as God speaks, I should say, um, give us some hearts, give us some likes, comment. Um, and if, if you, you, you can amen by hitting the like button or the heart button, uh, if something pinches you the wrong way, you can say, wow, or whatever. If I make you, uh, if, if God makes you upset, I should say, you can give us an angry face. But I really believe God has put something uh, in my spirit for many of us out there to, tonight. And, and if you're viewing right now, I want you to share this. Please share this. It's important because I believe God wants to speak to us tonight in a very powerful way. And I believe there's going to be a shifting and a shaking that God is going to do. Amen. That there's going to be a shifting and a shaking. So please, please share this video. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, it's great to see where you're watching from. So if you're watching from Trinidad, let us know you're, you're watching from Trinidad and uh, share this video. Wherever you're watching from, please share the video and please um, uh, let us know where you're watching from. It's great to see you wherever you're watching from in the world. But I just want to, again, thank you. I have so much inside of me right now. I'm trying to take my time with this uh, because I really want to jump into the word. But I want to thank you once again for all those who have partnered with us, for all those who have sown uh, seeds uh, into Live Current International Ministries and have partnered with us. I want to thank you because without you, this is not possible. Without you sowing, this is not possible. And I just want to take a moment to thank you for doing that. And, and thank you for all, all you who have been praying for Live Current International Ministries, all you have, who have been praying um, for us. Thank you very much. We appreciate your prayers. And I want you to know that Live Current is a place that, that is life-giving and world-changing. And we believe through the power of Jesus Christ that, that um, your ch life will be changed 
Amen. And there will be life given into you through Jesus Christ. And not only that, that it will change the world around you. It will change the world that you're in as it overflows out of you. Amen. But I have a, a hot topic tonight. And I want to share this, but before I do, I want to say a few things uh, just to to um, align what I'm about to say. Uh, number one, from the get go, I, I shared with you guys that God has given me a threefold assignment, and uh, that I believe God has called me to. And. One is to take territory. So sometimes that means take territory uh, in the spiritual realm and people's lives or, or in a place. Also, he has called me to align things, bring things into alignment. And as you see, as we've been uh, ministering on uh, infected, the religious spirit is bringing the church into alignment. And the other thing is activate, is to activate people's giftings, is to activate people's callings and anointing. And I believe that God has called me to do that. And tonight's message is going to be an activation type of message. It is a very prophetic uh, message. And, and I believe we're going to flow in the prophetic. I believe God has given me some prophetic words for certain people. And we're going to begin to flow in the prophetic. I am not a prophet, but I flow in the, I, my grace is and office is not as a prophet, but all of us are supposed to flow in the prophetic and I, 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 I flow in the prophetic as God leads uh, maybe not to the extent that some do but I believe God has given me some specific prophetic words for certain people and, and I believe as we, we go into this message God will allow me to flow in that way tonight and so I want you to put your seatbelt on I want you to get ready. I want you to get your minds ready, your hearts ready. I believe that is what worship is supposed to do. We said, King of glory, come fill this place. And I don't know where you're at. I don't know where you're sitting at. You might be at home. You might be in your vehicle, wherever you're at. Our prayer is that the King of glory, we know he is there with you. And just allow him to fill the space. Allow him to begin to transform and shift the atmosphere where you're at. Allow the heavens to be open upon you so you can receive what God has for you tonight. Let's just take a moment and pray right now. Jesus, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, that no matter where we're at, God, you are with us, God. No matter where we're at, that you are with us, God. We thank you that you're omnipresent, God, that you're omnipresent, God, and that you're with us even now, God. If we're in our homes, God, if we're in our cars, wherever we're at, God, you are with us, God. God, we ask right now, uh, God, I, can, I ask that the heavens would begin to shift, the heavens would begin to open right now, that the doors of heaven would begin to open over every person, over every home, every place that they're sitting, wherever they're at right now, whoever's viewing now, whoever might may view in the replay, I ask God that that they the heavens would just open right now in the name of Jesus, that there would be a shifting in the atmosphere, God, that your Holy Spirit would just begin to minister, your Holy Spirit would begin to speak, your Holy Spirit would begin to, to just come upon us, God. God, we come against every obstacle and everything in our, our mind, everything in our heart th that is contrary to you. We, we we remove it right now in the name of Jesus. We bind that up and we command you to be removed now. We command every distraction to be removed now in the name of Jesus. Everything in our hearing, everything in our hearts that would distract us, God, from receiving your word today, God, we command it to be removed right now in the name of Jesus. We come against every all witchcraft. We come against everything that, that would block us from hearing now in the name of Jesus. We break it now in Jesus' name. And God, we ask that your heaven would be open, God, upon us. We ask that your spirit would begin to minister and move in us like never before, God. I pray, Lord God, that whoever's watching, God, you know exactly what they need to hear tonight. You know exactly what they need to receive tonight, God. And I pray that you would speak, God, very clearly tonight, God. God, I pray that you would speak to each of us very clearly, God, tonight in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, Lord God, that, Lord God, that your, your word would pierce uh, through the joints and the marrow, God. It would bring a separation, God. Your word would become active and alive in our lives as we put it into practice in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would hide me behind your cross and every word out of my mouth would be from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's get into the word tonight. I ask that you would pull out your Bible if you have a Bible uh, or if you have it on an electronic device, pull it out. And for some of you, 
um, I want to encourage you to, to take some notes tonight. Uh, take some notes. And as God begins to speak to you tonight, I want you to begin to write it down. I want you to write it down. As God begins to speak to you, I want you to write it down. Tonight, the, the topic is exposed. The topic we're going to talk about is exposed. And I believe God has been exposing some things and he's been exposing things in our lives. He's been exposing things in, in, in this world. He's been exposing the church. He's been exposing a lot of things. And we're going to discuss that tonight because there's some specific things I believe God has been exposing and that he wants to expose. Now, I'm going to read a very familiar uh, passage and I've preached this. This is probably one of my favorite uh, passages to preach. I preached it in many different ways, but I don't think I've ever quite preached it like this before. And and this is something that that God stirred in my heart and through prayer. He he just began to speak this to me uh, very clearly. And I believe this is a word that many of us need to hear tonight because I believe God is moving. He's exposing some things in our lives and He's moving us to a different level. He's moving us to another dimension in him. And if you are willing to allow God to speak and expose things, then you will be moved to another level and another dimension. So how many of you are ready for that tonight? Because I know that I'm ready to go to another level. I'm ready to go to another dimension. I'm ready for God to use me in a way he's never used me before. How about you? How about you? Are you ready for that? So let's get into this tonight. We're going to look at 1 Samuel 17. Uh, 4 through 11, and I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. I, I like that translation just because it's it, it's very um, easy to, to read, but it also speaks in how we speak today a lot more. And so let's look at this. This is the story of David and Goliath, and yes, we know this story, many of us, even if you haven't um, been in church, uh, you know this story anyways. Many of us know this story, but I'm going to start at verse 4. And, and I want you to understand that, that uh, the Philistines and Israel, they came out and they were in getting ready to war against each other. They were in battle alignment. And this was a crisis. Just, uh, it's a different crisis than what we're in in the world today, but it's still a crisis. And anytime we look at crises, there's things that God wants to expose and there's things that God wants to reveal. And this is a crisis uh, that Israel was in. And because for many years, they were they uh, were ruled by the Philistines and there was constant war. And then Saul became king and he started fighting back against them. Even throughout the time of Samuel, there was a, a war between the Philistines and the Israelites and even before him and Eli and there was a fight going on. But Saul becomes king and we see that they start to get some freedom from the Philistines. And and But we see here in this uh, passage that the Philistines are coming out against them. And you have to understand back back in those days that, and even in our days, when you uh, win in a war, you be you possess the land. So so there was something that was going to be possessed that 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 the Israelites had to fight against. They had to fight fight against the the Philistines so they wouldn't be possessed and ruled by the Philistines. So let's look at this in verse four. It says then Goliath a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. Listen, he was bigger than Shaquille O'Neal. He wore a bronze helmet, and his bronze coat of, of mail weighed 125 pounds. He also wore a bronze leg armor, and he carried a javelin, a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spear, uh, spearhead, spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Goliath stood and shouted and taunted across to the Israelites. Why are, all, why are you all coming out to fight? He called, I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. 
send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. I want to read that part again. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified or they were afraid and deeply shaken. See, whenever we face crisis, crises or, or giants in our lives, it exposes who we are. Whenever we face a crisis like we're facing now or we uh, face a certain giant in our life, I'm not talking about a physical giant, but a spiritual giant, um, and sometimes it manifests in a, in a physical way, it exposes who we really are. So in this crisis, I believe that God is exposing who we really are. Who we really are is being exposed in this crisis. It exposes our true faith in God or it exposes our lack of faith in God. See, a crisis or a giant will expose our faith in God or our lack in faith in God. And I believe right now that God is exposing many people's lack of faith or he is exposing their faith. I'm going to say this right now because, because I just, there, there is many people, uh, many believers who I have respected and looked up to. And in this time of crisis, I've looked into their faces and even with their own words, I have seen fear. I've seen uh, them terrified and afraid. And, and, and I was amazed because I seen, and it wasn't that so much that there was a lack there, there, because of the, their lack, it was like there was a lack of faith, but there, the fear and the faith were kind of together, and at times you would see the faith arise, and at times you would see the fear arise. And I'm here to tell you today that crisis and, 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 and giants exposes who you are. It exposes your faith or lack of faith in your life. And, and many times in a crisis, there's times that you will get that um, there's not the absence of fear. Listen, fear exists. Fear is a real thing. And at times what happens is this, that in a moment we, we, we feel fear or we sense fear, but the faith has to supersede that and faith has to conquer that fear. Many times instead of faith rising in us, fear rises up. We cannot move forward or conquer anything when we are being controlled by fear. Listen, the Israelites could not move forward against Philistine, the Philistine army because of the fear of Goliath. They could not move forward because they were controlled in this moment and even Saul was controlled by fear. When faith arises up, then we can move forward and we can conquer the giant or make it through the crisis that we are facing. And this is very, very true in many circumstances. I want to share a story with you uh, just so that you can understand, we all experience this in, at different levels. We, we all experience crisis and different things at different levels. And, and I want us to understand that, that it doesn't matter who we are, we all will experience a giant doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter your belief. We all experience crisis and we all experience giants. There's many to all of us today. Every single one of us are experienced this pandemic. Not one of us is exempt from it. Not one of us. It, it doesn't matter who you are. You have been affected by it in one way or another. When, um, when uh, we were uh, a lot younger and my daughter, uh, my youngest daughter who was singing on the worship team, uh, when we got pregnant with her um, and my wife went in for a checkup, I think it was about three months, somewhere around there, she went in for a checkup. Um, I was at work. Uh, she went in by herself and the doctors begin to tell her um, and panic. And, and the doctor said that there's a hole in our heart. In fact, the doctors were trying to convince her that she was going to be uh, mentally handicapped. And they were trying to convince her to abort her. And, and, uh, and what happened was this, that, that they said because of the hole in the heart, there's going to be so many complications and all this and all that. And in, in that moment, my wife, uh, she had called me 
And she began to relate to me uh, what was going on and she was crying and she was upset. And, and so I had to, to leave work to go and pick her up because I knew I couldn't just leave her, take a cab or, or anything like that. Uh, but I needed to go pick her up and take her home and comfort her and give her strength. And, and I remember this very clearly because when my wife began to um, share this with me, um, I began to sense the fear or, or the the. Uh, um, the fear that was that was present, right? I begin to hear and sense the fear because this is the real thing. I didn't want to lose um, the baby, the um, this baby before she was even born, and 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 this was something that was very serious and. And I remember um, on my way to pick up my wife, I, I had called my father and I, I told him what was going on. And I said, I need you to pray. And, and he began to pray. And as he began to pray, my face, uh, faith started to arise. And as he began to pray, see, see, I want, I want to share this with somebody. Somebody needs to hear this right now. There's times that we're going through things that we need to know who we need to call to pray. We can't just call anybody because not everybody can handle handle what we're about to share. But there's times that we need to call certain people because we need them to pray. And as they begin to pray, it begins to rise up the faith that is already within inside of us. It begins to encourage us. And my faith begin to rise. And, I, and we begin to pray. And we called on other intercessors. And we begin to pray. I, by the time I got to my wife, I said, baby, it's going to be okay. Baby, we don't have to worry because we don't have to believe the doctor's report. We believe the report of God. And my Bible says that by his stripes that we are healed. So this child will be healed in the name of Jesus. So a few months later, we had to schedule, we had to schedule, um, uh, ultras, it wasn't an ultrasound, but it was something similar to ultrasound with a heart specialist who dealt with babies. And so we went in there. And but but before we went in there, we had been praying and we believed we already received a, a report from God that everything was gonna be okay. So I went in there, not in fear of what the doctor was gonna tell me, but in faith that there was a miracle that already took place. And when we went in there, and I'm here to tell you this right now, that we we went in there, the doctor she looked at us and, and she looked and she looked and she looked and, and finally she said she said to us, Well, there must have been some mistake or or she tried to explain it away, but I don't see any hole in the heart anymore. And we said, no, there is no mistake. We already know we prayed and God healed her. And to this day, there has never been any complications. There's nothing wrong with her. Why? Because we understood that we had to believe and faith had to arise. See, when we be begin to uh, believe, faith begins to arise with inside of us. And in this story of David and Goliath, what, what we are looking at, what was being exposed and who was being ex exposed. See, in a crisis and when we face giants, there's th th things are being exposed in our lives and, and who we are is being exposed. And we're going to look at this because it's very important. In that moment, every crisis we face and every giant we face, it, it, face, it builds our faith for the next crisis that we face. Let me say that again. Every crisis and every giant we fa face builds our faith for the next time we, we face another giant or another, another crisis. There's many examples I can give you in my own life that, that when we face certain things, the next time we fa face it, we don't look at it in the same viewpoint, but we look at it differently uh, be, because of what we faced before. And for some of you, you need to understand that this, God got you through this far. He's going to continue to get you through. But God has been exposing things all over the world. He's been exposing things in your life. He's been exposing things in my life. And he's been showing us through this crisis who we are. So what was being exposed? Let's, let's look at the two main characters uh, in this this. Um, uh, scripture. Let's look at Saul and we're going to look at David today. What was being exposed about Saul? What was being ex exposed about Saul? Number one, Saul's lack of faith was being exposed. We see here that Saul's lack of faith was being exposed because in verse 11 it says, when Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. It doesn't say that Paul, or, or sorry, that Saul, he rose up and he said, you know what, I'm going to fight Goliath. I'm going to take him on. No, it says that he was afraid. Because Saul was afraid, the whole army was afraid. 
His lack of faith did not just affect him, but it affected everyone around him. Listen, I'm here to tell you that your lack of faith or your faith affects every, doesn't just affect you, it affects your family members, it affects everyone around about you. See, if we operate in fear, we can only see what is in front of us. But if we operate in faith, we can see the victory. See, Paul or, or Saul couldn't see the victory because he was operating in fear instead of faith. He could not see uh, Goliath being defeated because he was operating in fear. He couldn't see the Israelites beating and defeating the Philistines' army. All he could see was him being a slave and being killed by the Philistines because he was operating in fear. And that affected his soldiers and the whole entire army. See, br faith will bring us down to see on ground, uh, ground level. but uh, or, Sorry, fear, fear will bring us down to see on ground level, but faith will lift us up to see past the giants in front of us. Many of us, we need to we need to begin to conquer this fear. And we talked about this last last week, but but I feel feel this strong again. We need to begin to break this fear so that we don't see what is in front of us, but we see over. When we begin to operate in faith, we begin to see through the viewpoint of, of God. We begin to see through the viewpoint of, of what God is saying and that we have victory in Jesus. But but uh, Saul here was operating out of a lack of faith and was operating in fear. Proverbs 27 and 19 says this, As a face is reflected in water, so the heart reflects the real person. A crisis will come, and, and when, when a crisis comes and a giant, you stand before a giant, it, it shows you the heart of a person. Let me say that again. Just as water reflects a face of a person, right? The heart reflects the real person. And what we see is this, that when we're standing in a crisis, when we're in the middle of a crisis or we're standing in front of a giant, it will show us who we really are. It will show us our true heart. Luke 6 and 45 says this, a good, a good person produces good things from the treasure of a good heart. And an evil, evil person produces evil things from the treasure of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. See, I'll, I, and I'm going to show you this, that, uh, that Saul had a lack of faith because of even what he was speaking. Even what he was speaking showed his lack of faith. In 1 Samuel 17, 33, it says, when, when David came to him and said, don't worry about this giant, I'll take care of him. Paul, uh, Saul's response was, don't be ridiculous, there is no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. See, he even spoke fear and his lack of faith when David began to speak faith. Some of us, I need you to hear this right now, because I hear for some of you, God is saying this, that when you begin to speak in faith, there's others who begin to speak out of their lack of faith. They begin to put you down. They begin to say, don't be ridiculous. And I'm here to tell you, just as David didn't listen to Saul, you don't need to listen to those people who are operating out of fear, who are operating out of the lack of faith, but you need to begin to operate in faith and you don't let those people sway you from what God is telling you and what God is telling you to do. And and we, we many of us are surrounded with souls in our lives. We're surrounded with people with a lack of faith. We're surrounded with people who will speak negativity into our lives because they're viewing things out of fear instead of out of faith. And we need to position ourselves and we need to begin to, to counteract that and not to believe that. But there's some of us today, this crisis and the giants we're facing during this crisis are exposing our lack of faith. There's many people today that are being exposed by this crisis and it's exposing their lack of faith and exposing their fear. Just as it did, this giant did Saul. Saul, uh, number two, Saul did never, uh, Saul never believed he was called to be the king. I, I, let me, let me break. I, and we're going to, this is kind of a two part right here. We see here that Saul never really believed he was called to be king. And I'm going to break this down for you because, see, when, when we begin to operate in fear, 
and we begin to operate uh, and, and outside of what God has called us to, it shows that we don't believe in who God has called us to be. For Samuel's 10 and 20 through 23, it says this, so Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel before the Lord, and the tribe of Benjamin was chosen by lot. Then he brought each family, because because Israel at this moment, they were asking not to be led by Samuel anymore, but to be led by a king. And so so God said to Samuel, I'm going to show, show you who the king was. He already anointed Saul at this moment to be king. Uh, but it, And Saul already knew he was, Samuel uh, had called him and anointed him to be king at, before, before this even took place. But it says here in verse 21, then he brought each family of the tribe of Benjamin before the Lord, and the family of Matrix was chosen. And finally Saul, son of Kish, was chosen from among them. But when they looked for him, he had disappeared. So they asked the Lord, where is he? And the Lord replied, he is hiding among the baggage. So they found him and brought him out, and he stood head and shoulders above everyone else. So even in this moment, as God was calling him to be king, he was. we see earlier in this chapter that Samuel had already anointed him to be king, had already told him he was going to be king. But this was his announcement before all of Israel that, that, that um, Saul was going to be king. And even in this moment, he, he didn't accept what Samuel had spoken to him days prior to this, had anointed him to be. He even the, It says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he even prophesied, uh, prophesied. But he still did not believe that he was anointed to be king and that he was called to this. And even in this, it shows his fear. Even in this, it shows his fear. See, say, and, and see, and time... Anytime Saul did anything, I want to say this, and we see this throughout, when you read about Saul, anything Saul did, anytime Saul did anything heroic, either Samuel told him to do it, or the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. This show, shows me he never accepted the anointing or calling to be king, and he was operating under the anointing of Samuel and not under his own anointing. Let me say that again. Anytime... We see uh, Saul going out to do battle, or, or he went out to do battle. Either he went out because Samuel told him to, by the voice of God, or the Spirit of the Lord. The first time it happened, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, it said, and he gathered him and he went out to fight. After that, it says that Samuel went to tell him what to do because God told him to tell him. And so he only went out to fight when Samuel told him. So that tells me that he really did not accept his own calling or anointing to be king. And he was operating under Samuel's anointing and not his own anointing. And he never really accepted this anointing to be king. We see this very clearly here because he never takes a position to go and, and fight against the Philistine and to begin the attack against the Philistines or against uh, the, the Goliath. We see that he hides and he's terrified and he's afraid. It shows us also that, that Saul had lost his anointing to lead. He, at this point, he had already lost his anointing to lead uh, the, the army of Israel into battle. And we see in 1 Samuel 13, 13 through 14, it says uh, that, that here what happened was God had told uh, Samuel to have Paul or, or Saul go out against the Philistines. And it told him that, that to wait. He told him, wait until I come to sacrifice. But it says in verse, uh, in, in verse uh, 13, it says this, You acted foolishly, Samuel, said. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not be endured will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. See, what happened was the army was beginning to get afraid. They were beginning to scatter. Fear started coming over them. 
And I believe fear was over over Samuel because or over Saul because he was waiting on Samuel to come and do the sacrifice and to give him the go ahead. And it says because he's seen everybody scattered, he went and sacrificed and 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 killed and did the offering uh, be, before Samuel even got there. When Samuel told him to wait for him. And it says here that the that this is when the anointing and, and the leadership uh, begin to be pulled away from, from Saul. But in, in chapter 15, God gives a command again through Samuel to um, Saul to go and kill the Amalekites and kill everybody. Don't leave anybody remaining. Kill everything and everybody. And we see that Saul did not do that in chapter 15. And Samuel says to him in verse 26, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. As Samuel turned to leave, Saul caught, uh, caught hold of the, the hem of his robe, and it tore. Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today, and has given it to one of your neighbors, to the one who is better than you. And we see even after this that the, the spirit of the Lord had lifted off of him and that, that there was another a spirit of torment that would come upon him. And, and, and you see here, you cannot be in a leadership position but have no anointing to lead. See, there's many who are in a leadership position who have no anointing to lead. And this exposed that, that, that Saul was king. He was king, and he's leading his people out to battle, but he could not lead him into battle. He could not lead him to conquer the Philistines because he had lost his anointing to lead because he, he stopped obeying God's commands, and he start, started pleasing people and doing what he felt was right instead of doing what God was commanding him to do. And there's many leaders today who have lost their anointing to lead. There's many pastors today, apostles and prophets and, and evangelists and, and and teachers today who have lost their anointing to lead because they started pleasing people and they started following their own kingdom and what they wanted to do instead of following the command of the Lord. Their heart was turned away from God and the anointing has been lifted off of them and they have lost the anointing to lead. And, and But they're still trying to lead. They're still in position to lead, but they can't lead. They're leading according to their own will and not God's will. See, Saul's fear... And lack of faith and lack of leadership was reflected in this time. It was reflected in this time of crisis. It was shown, it was revealed, that this, this lack of faith, this lack of leadership was reflected in this time. This lack of anointing was reflected in this crisis, was reflected as they were facing this giant. 1 Samuel 17 and 24 says this, As soon as Israel army saw him, they began to run away in fright. What happened was this, that because Saul was afraid, it reflected to all the men, it reflected to all the armies, and, and the, the, his lack of leadership, his lack of anointing, and his fear reflected on the army. It re Listen, our lack of leadership, our lack of fear, our lack of faith reflects on those around about us. It reflects, and, 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 and it begins to affect them as it has affected us. Let's, let's see, the other thing that was exposed was this, that Saul did not have an anointing to kill giants. Saul did not have the anointing to kill Goliath. Saul did not have anointing. See, many of us think we're, we're anointed to take down uh, giants, and many of us think that we have this anointing. But if you have fear, if you don't have a heart after God, how can you ever take down a giant? If you don't listen to God's commands, if you don't uh, follow his word and, and you don't seek his face, how do you have an anointing to take down a giant? You don't. And many today think they are giant killers, but the truth is that they're not. Many today are just like Saul. They don't have anointing to kill giants, but they're standing before giants and they're standing in front of crisis every day and they can't overcome it because they don't have the anointing to. We see in verse uh, 25, have you seen the giant? The men asked, he comes out each day to defy Israel. The, the king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man a, one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempt from paying taxes. So, so why is this important? 
we see that he even knew he didn't have the anointing to kill this giant because he offered all these things to somebody else to kill the giant. Saul knew he couldn't kill the giant. Saul knew he didn't have the anointing to face Goliath. He knew this. He knew this because he had to offer a reward for somebody who would do it. This shows who he was. This, this giant, this battle, this crisis exposed who Saul was. And I'm telling you right now that this pandemic is exposing many people. This pandemic is exposing many leaders all across the world. It's exposing them. Uh, it's exposing people in their own homes. It's exposing many of us to who we really are. It's exposing our fear. It's exposing our, uh, our mentality, our thought processes. It's exposing uh, where we align in this world. It's exposing many things and, and we have to understand this and we have to begin to look at ourselves and ask God, what are you exposing in me? What are you saying about me? What are some of the things that I have to fix? What are some of the things that, that I have to... I have to go and bring before you what are some of the things that you're exposing in me that need to be fixed. See, see, it was too late for Saul at this point. Saul had already lost his anointing because he was exposed in many battles before. Many battles before exposed who Saul really was. As we read earlier, the battles and the crises that he faced before exposed his true heart. And that is why God took the anointing away from him. That is why he couldn't face the giant. But many of you, God has given a chance right now. He has given a chance to correct things. He is giving a chance to, to, to be, begin to align your life again. This is a crisis and this is a battle. God is extending his grace to us. And he's saying church and he's saying to believers and he's saying to leaders. He's saying, I'm extending, extending my grace. I'm exposing you now so that you can repent, so that you can turn back to me, so you can listen to my commands and follow me and so I can place an anointing on you that you had before or he's and for some of us he's putting a new anointing he's putting a new mantle on us and he's releasing a new thing and I'll tell it here today that there's some Davids that are listening right now there's some Davids that are gonna begin to arise there's some Davids that are gonna begin to uh, to uh, that anointing of David is gonna be released on people today the anointing of David is gonna be released released on lives tonight. There are those some who are watching right now and you feel the presence of God. You feel a mantle of David coming upon you. You feel the Holy Spirit beginning to release upon you. You feel the stirring of the Holy Spirit up inside of you and God has been showing you things. God has been taking you and is showing you uh, the, the lack of faith and he's saying tonight I'm going to stir your faith. Tonight I'm, your faith is going to begin to arise and you're going to be anointed tonight. You're going to have this anointing of Dave, David that is going to come upon you and you're going to arise. Your time is now. Your time is now. I'm, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself but I'm moving with the Spirit as the Spirit leads me and I want... So, so what did this, this same giant, this same crisis expose David to? See, the same crisis, the same giant exposed who David was. It exposed who Saul was, but it also exposed who David was. And, and, and see, many of us, we're all in this crisis together. And it's, it's exposing Saul's and it's exposing David's. I'm telling you right now, there's a da David's are arising all over the world right now. There's David's arising right now in Trinidad and Tobago. There's David's arising in right now. There's some of you who, who are arising and you're going to see things arise. You're going to see uh, you're facing giants. And the question is, are you going to allow your faith to overcome or are you going to allow fear to overcome? See, what, uh, what was exposed in David was he had faith. His faith was exposed. David's faith was exposed. Everybody else was afraid. There, You might be surrounded by hundreds of people. You might be surrounded by your family who is afraid, who is terrified right now. You might be surrounded by people who are speaking very negative things. But you have to be a David. You have to be a David. See, everybody around David was afraid. Everybody around David was terrified. Everybody around David ran and hid. But David said, no, there's something inside of me. There's a God in Israel. There is a, the God I serve in Israel can conquer this, uh, this giant. And that God I know 
and I, and I know that this faith begins to arise. The warrior inside of David begin to arise. I'm telling you right now, there's a warrior spirit beginning to arise in some of you right now. There's a warrior spirit beginning to arise in some of you right now. Your faith is beginning to activate. Your faith is beginning to arise, and God is going to begin to use you. You're going to see how everybody else around you is going to be negative, but because of your faith, they're going to gain faith, and we're going to look at this. Look at verses 31. We're still in 1 Samuel 17. Look at verses 31 through 37. It says this, and we're going to look at also verses 45 through 47 because I want to show you David's faith here. It says, then David question, uh, question was reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. This is how David responded opposite of everybody else. It says this in verse 32. Don't worry about the Philistine, David said, told Saul. I'll go fight him. Saul, of course, being Saul, don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he has been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have, I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the, if the animals turn on me, I catch it by the jaw and the club and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to the pagan Philistine too, for he had defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally con consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Now let's look. This is his response to Saul. Let's look at his response when he goes out to face Goliath. He says this, and if you can't see faith in this, then fear is really covering your eyes. And you need to ask, say right now, I command fear to leave my eyes. I command fear to leave my life. And I, and I need to hear and see the, the faith of David. And I'll need that faith of David to arise with inside of me. And David replied this to the Philistine. You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the, the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel, and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. That is faith. See, David did not have faith in his own skill. David did not have faith in what he could do. His faith relied on the Lord. He knew that the Lord had delivered Israel. He knew the Lord delivered Israel from the Egyptians. He knew that the Lord had taken them across the Red Sea. He knew that the Lord had given them and won many battles for them in the history of Israel. And he knew that this was nothing. This was nothing. This was nothing for God. He already knew that God delivered him from the lion and the bear. And he knew that if God did that for him, he'll deliver Israel from Goliath and the Philistines. His faith arose and he said, I don't care. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care that you're big, bad, and ugly. I don't care that you're nine feet tall because my God will take you down. It's nothing that I'm going to do. It's not by my stone. It's not by, by my sling. But it is by the, the hand of the Lord who, who is in charge of Israel. The, the hand of the Lord and his army who reigns over us, the supreme God, the one and only God. That is how I will defeat you. It is not me who defeats you, but it is God who will defeat you. And since too many of us, we look at who we are. We look at our own skills. 
We look at what we have to work with. We, and we say, we look at our finances and, and everything around about us. And we say, I don't see how God can do this. I don't have anything. I, I, I don't have education maybe. Or I don't have money. How can God use me? I don't have this or I don't have that. And, and what we have to understand is not about what you have. It's about who you have. And if you have God in you, if you have God on your side, you can defeat any giant that stands in front of you. No matter what crisis you face, you can defeat it. And I'm here to tell you tonight that God wants to arise your faith up and God wants you to begin to believe in Him that no matter what you face, no matter what it looks like, that God will be with you. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And He will conquer that giant for you. He will get you through this crisis and that there's victory at the end of this for you. The other thing, thing it exposed in David was this. David knew who he was. Oh, man. See, Saul did not understand, and Saul did not know who he was. But David knew who he was. It says here in verses 38 and 40, so, so, Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet, and a coat of, of mail, mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a, a step or two to see what it was like. For he had never worn such a thing before. He said, I can't go in this. He protested to Saul, I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from the stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, then armed only with his shepherd's staff and a sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. I'm here to tell you that some of you, you need to learn who you are. David knew who he was. He knew he couldn't, couldn't put on and be somebody else. He knew he couldn't be what he was not called to be. David knew he was a shepherd. David knew that he had beat, beaten the lion and the bear with a sling and a staff. And he said, if I can beat the lion and the bear with a sling and a staff, I can beat uh, this giant with a same exact thing. He knew who God called him to be. See, at this point, David was already anointed to be king. At this point, David already was anointed to be king. And this shows you that he accepted his anointing. This shows you he accepted who God called him to be. And that even if he didn't have the, the, the rank of king, even if he didn't have the, the, the armor and everything that else that King Saul had, he still knew who he was and he knew that he was a shepherd and he knew that he was going to lead God's people into victory by God's hand. He knew the anointing that was upon his life. And he said, I I am going to lead. This exposed that David was anointed to lead. This exposed that David was anointed to lead. I'm going to say it again. This exposed the anointing that David had to be king. Because he was willing to face a giant that nobody else was willing to face. He was willing to face the giant that Saul was not willing to face. He was willing to lead the Israel... Israelite army up against the Philistines, Philistines which Saul was not willing to do. In verse 50 and 54, it says, So David triumphed over the Philistines with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheaf. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah gave a great shout of triumph and rushed after the Philistines, chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road from Shaphrim as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the Israelite army returned and plundered the the deserted Philistines camp. Now I want to say this. It was because David had an anointing to lead and, and he, because he understood what his anointing was, that he was able and he had faith that he was able to defeat Goliath. And because of that, it showed his anointing to lead. And because, because he did that, all of a sudden, the Israelites' army went and defeated the Philistines' army because David had an anointing to lead. That is why they went and attacked. They seen the victory. They seen the anointing that was on David to triumph, to lead them into victory, to lead them into battle. And that's why they went and defeated the Philistines. Saul did not have the anointing, so he couldn't do that. 
Let's see. Let's look at the fourth thing and the last thing. And I'm getting ready to close and we're getting ready to move in a certain direction right about now. But it says here, uh, we see here that also this shows us, this exposed that David was anointed to, to kill giants. David was anointed to kill giants. He was the first person. One of the, he wasn't the first person, but he was in, in this time in Israel. We see that, that back in, in um, when, when Israel took over, uh, when they took over the land, that, that men killed giants. There was giants in the land and, and that giants were killed. But we see here that it's been a long time since a giant was killed. And we see here that there was anointing upon David to kill giants. And we see here in verse 50 and 51, So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled the sword from Goliath and he chopped his head off. See, David had the anointing to kill giants. Nobody else had that anointing, but David did. David had the anointing to kill Goliath and it, and it showed who David was. This exposed, this crisis, this, this giant exposed who David was. And there's many of you tonight, I believe God was speaking to me this, that there's many of you tonight who are anointed to kill giants. And I'm going to explain that. There's many of you, God, God is releasing the, an anointing to kill giants right now upon you. He's a releasing that anointing of David and the anointing to kill giants upon you right now in Jesus' name. He's releasing it upon you. Everyone has a different giant to face. Let me say this. Let me break this down. Everyone ha of us have different giants to face and to kill. For some of for some of us, there are giants that have been in in our families for years and years and years, and God is going to to use you to use us to kill that giant and lead others in our family to kill the same giant. Listen, I, and let me break this down a little bit closer. If if you wanted to to be a giant killer, you have to. If let me break this down. Moving ahead. There, there, there are many of us, right, that there's things, there's giants in our families. There's giants in our families, uh, and, and there's things in our families that are going, uh, that have been before us, such as divorce in our family, poverty, addiction, having children out of wedlock, adultery, not having any education, not owning a business, not owning a house. Maybe there's nobody in your family who has ever gone to college or who has ever gone to uni and you never graduate away from uni. Some of you, God, God is going to give you the ability to conquer those giants and conquer the giants of having a master's degree or, or having a doctorate degree. Whatever, there's giants in our families and there's giants that surround us. There's giants in our workplaces that maybe there's a giant you're trying to get another level in, in your workplace and you've been praying you've been seeking God God's going to release this anointing upon you to elevate you in your workplace and you're going to conquer that giant there's giants that we face all the time maybe there's a boss in your workplace or, or there's different things that go people around you who have been frustrating you and it's been a, a burden on you and it, it, it's, it's God is going to give you the anointing to be able to deal and pray to to bring these things down. God is going to give you anointing to break through and kill some of these giants. For some of you, there's addictions that are in your family. You're going to be the one to break the, that generational curse, to break that giant in your family. For some of you, there, there's a, a giant of poverty all over your family. And God is saying, I'm going to give you the ability to break the poverty over your family and to break that giant over your family. I'm going to give you the ability to break the, the giant of not owning a home that is over your family. I'm going to give you that ability to break it down. For some of you, God is going to allow you to, to break down uh, giants in the church system and in the, re, and in the religious system. For some of you, it's going to be in, in a regional setting. God is going to give you ability or, or in a city. He's going to give you ability to begin to defeat giants. And for others, it's going to be in a national capacity or a worldwide capacity that he's going to begin to give you the ability to defeat giants, but not all of us are at that same level. Not all of us are there. Some of us, God has just called us to defeat the giants within our families and within uh, the, the circumstances that surround us. And God is going to release that anointing on some of you today. And let me say this, if we want to be a giant killer, we have to surround ourselves with giant killers. If you want to be a giant killer, 
You have to surround yourself with giant killers. We see after this that David had many that followed him, many men that followed him that killed giants also. In fact, they killed the rest of Goliath's brothers. There are family giants that are going to come down. I'm telling you this right now. I feel it in my spirit that there is family giants that are going to begin to fall. And God is anointing some of you for, to take down these family giants and these family curses. And they're going to begin to fall. This is the time. God is exposing these things. He's exposing some of these. I believe he's even exposing some of these giants that you didn't see before. Some of these giants that you did not see before or did not understand were there before have been exposed in this crisis and God is exposing it and it's going to begin to break. It's going to begin to break now in Jesus' name. God is going to begin to give you strategy on how to defeat the giants. He's going to begin to show you on how to de begin to de defeat these giants that you're facing in your family, the giants that you're facing uh, in, in your finances, the giants you're facing in your jobs, the giants you're facing in your communities, the, uh, the giants that you're facing in your nation, in your country, wherever you live, in your region, he's going to give you the strategy and, and to begin to defeat them. And I want to say this, David did not just go out. He did not just go out and all of a sudden decide to defeat Goliath. No, he did it privately before anybody else saw what he was doing. There's many of you who have been praying. There's many of you who have been seeking God. There's many of you who have been killing the lions and the bears privately when nobody else is looking. And, and God is saying, now is the time that I'm going to begin to expose you to everybody else. Now is the time that people in your family are going to begin to see who you really are. Now is the time I'm going to begin to expose your prayer life and who you really are. Now is the time I'm going to begin to expose your faith and what God is is calling you to do. In fact, God, as I was praying, uh, as I was praying today, uh, God began to give me certain people, and one of the p p persons that God began to give me is Cheryl in Trinidad. And He said to me that Cheryl, God, you have been praying. God has been seeing you pray. He's been seeing you be begin to be kill the lions and the bears. But He said, now is time. I'm going to give you this anointing to kill the giants in your family. I heard that very clearly from the Lord that God is going to give you. Oh, I feel it in the spirit. God is anointing you right now in the name of Jesus. He's anointing you right now to kill the giants in your family to kill the giants in your family. There's certain giants. I don't know what those giants are. All right, he didn't show me that. All he showed me, that there was giants in your family and that you've been attacking them. You've been coming up against them in war in the spiritual realm as you've been praying. You've been praying for certain things and God is going to re release an anointing and a new strategy upon you to take down those giants in your family. I, I'm telling you right now, that anointing is coming upon you right now. There's others of you that God has been, he's been, he's been, um, there's emotional giants that you faced for a long time. There's emotional giants that you faced for a long time. And, and I believe uh, God showed me that there's a Tracy, a Tracy, that there's a, there's a emotional uh, giants that you have been facing for a long time. And maybe you're watching on the replay. I don't know if you're watching right now, but there's emotional giants. There's scars and wounds that have been there from childhood, that have been there for a long time in your life. And, and, and maybe after childhood, maybe in your teen times, but, but those scars and those wounds have been a giant. They've been hindering you. They've been hindering you from growing. They've been hindering you from stepping out into certain things in your life. And God says you're going to face those giants and you're going to begin to be healed in the name of Jesus from these emotional scars and wounds because you've got to face certain things. There's things that you have to face and these scars and these wounds, but you have to see Jesus in there. You have to see Jesus in these circumstances, in these places where you were hurt, where you were wounded, and that God was there with you. He was there with you and and God wants to bring healing to that right now in the name of Jesus. And I believe that's for somebody else. I believe that's for others who are watching. That there's certain things that you have been facing emotionally that God wants to bring healing to right now in Jesus name right now in the name of Jesus we just pray for everyone who is uh, facing emotional giants right now emotional giants we come against those emotional giants and we command healing right now in the name of Jesus healing in those areas that they may see Jesus in those circumstances that they, they were hurt in those circumstances that they were abused or even raped or molested we that they would that they would begin to be healed 
now and that those giants would be broken in the name of Jesus right now in Jesus name right now in the name of Jesus I believe that there's others that God is going to begin to anoint you. There, there's things that you have seen, and God is going to anoint you to overcome these giants. The, the, there's fear that God is going to begin to anoint you to break the fear, to break the fear, to break the fear, to break the fear right now in the name of Jesus. We break fear right now in Jesus' name. We break fear in the name of Jesus. We break fear right now. We command fear to leave. A fear leave right now in the name of Jesus. There's things that are going to be broken. Many of you have won it. You've had a desire to, to start businesses. You a uh, business. And God is saying right now, and maybe you've started that business, but it hasn't uh, succeeded. And God is saying that God, He's this is the time to, to re go back into it. This is the time to address it. And God is going to begin to allow you to give strategies to face that giant and those hurdles of not succeeding that you had before. And you're going to overcome those things because He's going to give you anointing and a strategy because you were trying to do it a way that wasn't a way in that God did not give you to do. It was a way that was contrary to who you were. You were following somebody else's plans and the way somebody else did it. But God says, I'm going to give you the way to do it. I'm going to give you a strategy and you're going to do it my way. And then when you do it my way, you're going to overcome and you're going to conquer this giant of business that is in front of you. I believe that is for somebody today. If that's for you, say amen. Give me an amen. Let us know if, if these if this is for you. Let us know this is for you. Say amen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. And I believe God has given me a word. I've been praying certain things over Trinidad and Tobago. And I believe God, is, this is a season that God is shaking Trinidad and Tobago. I'm gonna, God is shaking Trinidad and Tobago. He is rising up giant killers all over, all over the land. He has been exposing the false leaders, the false pastors, the false teachers. And he is rising up the anointed, uh, the anointed ones. He is rising up the anointed ones in Trinidad and Tobago. You're going to see a shifting in Trinidad. Trinidad and Tobago and there's going to be a rising of anointing that is going to fall upon people in Trinidad and Tobago and there's going to be a shaking God is shaking I've seen it like like how you shake sh salt you you shake salt on your food. I seen him shaking this this salt shaker. He has Trinidad in, and Tobago in his hands, and he's shaking it. He's shaking it. He's exposing the false, and he's exp and he's exposing the truly anointed. Oh, there's a truly anointed that God is exposing. He is he is placing giant killers in the seven mountains of TNT. In the and I'm gonna explain what these seven mountains are right now. He is exp he's he's releasing giant killers into the church system. System. He's releasing giant killers into the family system. He's releasing giant killers into the education system. He's releasing giant killers into the government. He's releasing giant killers into the media. He's releasing giant killers into arts and entertainment. He's releasing giant killers into the business system all over Trinidad and Tobago. These are men and women who are anointed by God to lead and to kill giants. There is going to be a great revival in Trinidad and Tobago that is going to hit every system and Trinidad and Tobago is going to shift and to shake the country. Trinidad and Tobago is going to change. There will be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers that are anointed for each of these seven systems throughout Trinidad and Tobago and they are going to lead by the power of the Holy Spirit and there's going to be a shifting and a shaking all throughout every system of Trinidad and Tobago that is going to these uh, these uh, anointed giant killers, these anointed leaders are going to begin to operate by the giftings of the Holy Spirit that God has given them. They're going to certain ones are going to um, operate apostolically and prophetically and others are going to operate as evangelists others are going to operate as, as shepherds and pastors and then there's going to be those who are going to be teachers within each of these systems and it's going to begin to transform the systems of Trinidad and Tobago and there's going to be a shifting and a shaking and there's going to be a great revival that it comes to Trinidad and Tobago because of this anointing that is rising up within Trinidad this anointing of giant killers this anointing of people who are tired of of the same old thing, who are tired of the lies, who are tired of, of the crime, who are tired of 
Oh, the, 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 um, they're tired of the corruption. They're tired of lies all over. They're tired of it. And they're ready to arise up. And this anointing of the giant killers is falling upon them even now in the name of Jesus. And a great revival is going to begin to hit Trinidad and Tobago. And in fact, I believe it's already starting to hit Trinidad and Tobago even now. But we're going to see it grow. You're going to see a shifting even in the economy. And in months and, and years to come, the economy is going to rebound. In fact, it's going to be better than what it ever has been before. I feel this in the spirit. I, I believe God has been beginning to show me this in the spirit. And, 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 and there's going to be a shifting even in the government. You're going to see less corruption in government. You're going to see the crime begin to shift. And it's going to be better than it whatever was before. Because there's men and women of God who are going to arise in every system of Trinidad and Tobago. And they're going to begin to take down the giants in those systems. They're going to begin to destroy the giants in those systems and the Holy Spirit is going to begin to use them and give them the strategy and they're not going to be conform to what everybody else wants them to conform to they're not going to conform to what Saul is saying and what the system is saying but they're going to lead from the system of the kingdom of heaven and they're going to establish the kingdom system in the seven systems of Trinidad and Tobago in the seven mountains and there's going to be a great revival I'm telling you right now there's going to be a great revival in fact many are going to come to know Jesus Christ Many are going to be raised up. You're going to see people being raised up left and right. And you're going to be see, seeing people being exposed. You're going to see things start being exposed. You're going to continue to see church leaders and churches being exposed. All throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And the real church is going to arise. I'm telling you right now, the real church is going to arise. And as the real churches, church arises in Trinidad and Tobago, there's going to be a great revival that takes place. And if you testify to this tonight, you, I want you to listen and if you grab this in the spirit tonight I want you to begin to intercede I want you to begin to pray I want you to begin to understand what the spirit of God is saying you need to begin to intercede for Trinidad and Tobago and you need to begin to intercede for these seven systems over Trinidad and Tobago and watch and see how God rises and maybe some of you tonight God is rising up to be that giant killer in one of those systems he's rising you up to be apostle in that system he's rising you up to be a prophet in that system. He's rising you up even to be an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher in that system. I believe some of you, God is rising you up to change Trinidad and Tobago. You need to get on your knees and you need to begin to seek his face and allow God to anoint you to be that giant killer. Oh, I hear it in the spirit. There's many giant killers. There's many giant killers who are going to watch this on the replay. There's many giant killers who are even watching now. And for some of you, God has been weeding people out of your, he's been weeding people out of your presence and some of you he's been weeding people out of your church he's been weeding people out of your leadership or out of your core because he has called you to be a giant killer and they don't have that anointing they don't have that inside of them and and, and maybe God is exposing that and has exposed that but God is going to bring other people who are ready to kill giants to align with you and to be your errands and to be your hers and I'm believing that in live current international ministries we're going to raise up giant killers we're going to raise up people to affect the seven uh, seven systems the seven mountains of Trinidad and Tobago we're going to raise up apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to bring revival, to bring the revival to Trinidad and Tobago and to bring revival to, to the seven systems of Trinidad and Tobago. So if you're a giant killer and you don't have a ministry, you don't want, you're not a part of a ministry who raises up giant killers, I'm at, you need to join Live Current International Ministry because God is calling us to rise up giant killers. There's an anointing that is going to be released even now in in the name of Jesus, we pray right now for every person who is watching. God, you've been exposing fear. You've been exposing things in people's lives, even now as they've been watching. And some of them see it. And you just need to repent. If you feel like you're more like a soul, you need to repent and allow God to begin to minister to you. Allow the anointing to begin to fall upon you. And God is going to begin to rise you up to be that giant killer. He's going to begin to arise inside of you to be that giant killer. Allow and receive his anointing. Allow him to speak to who you are.
Allow him to speak to your purpose. Allow him to speak to what he has called you to do. For many of you, you have God spoke to you years and years ago, but you never fulfilled that dream. You never fulfilled what God spoke to you. And God is saying, I'm bringing that back to you now, and you need to step into it. You need to listen. You need to, I've been speaking this to you for the last two weeks, God says, for the last two weeks. And God says, I, I want you to begin to listen, and you, it's time to, to obey. It's time to follow your dream and the dreams that I've put inside of you, the purpose that I've put inside of you. It's time to step into it. It's time to be what I have called you to be. It's time to be that giant killer that, that I have called you to be. And for some of you, God has called you to do things within your family. And God has been telling you to do certain things, but you have not been listening. And God says, it's time to do it. It's time to do it. And when you begin to do it, they're going to begin to follow. When you begin to do it, they're going to see the anointing that is upon you. And everything in your family is going to come into alignment in the name of Jesus. I command everything in, the, in people's families to come into alignment to the word of God in the name of Jesus. As they begin to lead, as they begin to lead and conquer these giants and their families. May their family follow in the name of Jesus. May their family follow in Jesus' name. And may that anointing be released on their family to kill giants in Jesus' name. May there be anointing to kill giants upon them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Because you're raising up giant killers even now. Even now. There's people who need to be healed. The healing power of God is flowing upon you right now in the name of Jesus. The healing power of God is touching you right now. You need to testify if you're being healed now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The healing power of God is falling upon you right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God is releasing some of you. He's giving you a mantle of healing a mantle of healing, a ministry of healing is falling on you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for you are raising up giant killers in Jesus' name. You're exposing those who are not, and you're exposing those who are. You're exposing in this crisis, you're exposing the true intent of the heart. In fact, the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. And that is why God chose him to lead. That is why God anointed him to be a, a giant killer. You cannot be a giant killer unless you're a person after God's heart. Let me say that again. You cannot be a giant killer unless you are a person who is after God's own heart. If that's you tonight and, and you say, you know what, I want to be a giant killer, but I've ne I don't know who God is. I don't know who Jesus is. I've never, I don't have a relationship with him. And God is saying to you right now, this is an opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus right now and, and, and to begin that relationship with him and to begin that journey to being a giant killer. If that's you tonight and you want to ask Jesus into your life, I want you to just to pray with me and say, Jesus Come into my life. Be my best friend. Forgive me of my sins. I want you to be Lord of my life, master, a supreme master in control of my life. I want you to guide me. I want you to lead me. I want to have a relationship with you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says if you prayed that prayer with me tonight, that the, that the heavens are throwing a party for you like none other. And I believe right now God is raising you up to be a giant killer in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer with me tonight, I want you to email us at livecurrentint at gmail.com and I'll send you some things to help you begin that relationship, your relationship with God and just direct you in that. And I thank God for each of you right now who are joining. I don't know who, who, who is joining on there, but I believe that, that, that God is speaking to many of you right now. There's an anointing that God has released upon you there, uh, to kill giants, to be an overcomer, to face this crisis. And, and there's going to be things that God is, is already stirring inside of you to begin to tackle and begin to begin to do. And, and I want to encourage you to do that in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, if you have been blessed by this and you want to partner with us and help get us uh, the rest of the way to Trinidad and Tobago, uh, you can. Uh, we're going to put some information up. You can email us and you can, uh, you can partner with us. If you would like to sow a seed, you can do that through Cash App or PayPal. We're going to show you how to do that. It's going to be in the comments and at the end you're going to see how you can do that. But we thank 
thank you for sowing seeds. Everyone who has sown a seed, everyone who has partnered with us, we are so grateful for you. And we're praying that God blesses you a hundredfold. You're a part of the team. You're a part of the family of Live Current International Ministries, and we thank God for you. We're praying for you, and we ask that you would share this video. Give us likes. Give us comments. There's many that need to hear this tonight. There's many that need to be encouraged tonight. There, there's many that need to hear this, and, and you need to share this video uh, to your friends, to your family, and, and, you, and, and we ask that you would do that, and we thank you for doing that. We thank you for joining us tonight, and we will be back here. Saturday night, next Saturday at 6 o'clock again and, and at the same time, same place, 6 o'clock Saturday night. Thank you for joining us. God bless you and have a great night.